Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful time. This was this is a Monday for us, and I hope your Monday is good, going to be good, and that your weekend was peaceful and restful. Acts two, verse forty six says, "Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart." So this. Me, this um, verse rocked me a little bit to my core because like taking the meals together with gladness and sincerity of the heart. I adore my family and I have not been able to be with them. So I yearn to be with my sisters, my ones in England. So um, it's been quite a, a, a rough two years and it's not just for me, it's for everybody. Um, and day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple, um, I'm looking at so many um, preachers and so many prophets concerned about what they see in the world. How divided the church is at the moment. And we are divided over the law of our country, so it doesn't matter which country you are, there's this divide around law in the country um, then there's division around health so you're either a vaxxer or an anti-vaxxer for whatever good or bad reasons that is um, we are divided on how we should be raising our children um, we are divided by race and by culture um, and so there's so much to divide us and actually, we're seeing that in many churches, um, many church groups, like, like a global church group, or even within one or two communities, you know, the church themselves. And it is worrying when churches and church groups are becoming divided. Sometimes you can actually see the division is being caused because there's unrighteousness happening and God is going, hmm, I'm not going to bless this church anymore. But sometimes it's actually a, the, the pressures from outside, the world calling people towards itself and away from God. And then the division um, happens because some folk really want the right thing and some folk really want what's not godly and so we have to wonder we have to wonder where these divisions come from and it, and this is a, a this is a reading from Acts. so this is after god is jesus has left the earth and and now the disciples are left you know the cornerstone peter and he, the, the followers of christ have to now decide to build this church that jesus has given them to build and it was with one mind that these church, this church developed. Yes, churches fractioned off eventually, and now you've got the Catholic Church, and you've got the Eastern Catholic Church, and you've got the Methodist Church, and the Presbyterian Church, and the Baptist Church, and the um, many, many, many churches. And now there's more modern churches, and um, more modern sort of philosophies and theologies, and um, all godly, all coming from a loving point of view, all, you know, but different. And you have to wonder, is this causing um, division? And so I think of it like this, and I don't know if it's going to help you, but I grew up in the Methodist church, and I was for a very long time a Methodist. And I love the Methodist church, I still love the hymns, I like their theology and that. Um, but we've moved church and we've moved to another kind of a church, more charismatic church, something different, um, something that it felt like that it was the right thing for us to do as a family. Um, and not that we hate the Methodist church and we never will, um, but we moved. There were some things around the politics in that church which we were a bit concerned about. But there are also things in this church that we are concerned about. But the point is, I'm still loving God. It's when 
something's happening in a church that that I'm not loving God or majority of the people aren't loving God or the hierarchy or like the leaders of the church that are, are not loving God. That's when the church starts to crumble. When it becomes somewhere where you are going to fulfill what you want in life. Not what you need, not what God has ordained, but what you want. So I think we really need to seriously pray about our church and about our clergy. This past two years, our ministers and our pastors and our priests, all the people that are the workers of God have had a really rough time. They've had to help families through very, very bad times. And I think they are tired. So I think we can have mercy and we can love them and we can keep them in our prayers and we can keep them um, undergirded and um, we can give them help and courage. So think about it. Think what you can do for your pastoral family today. Have a wonderful day and we'll speak again tomorrow.